Good morning, people. How are you doing? Today is the 11th day of June 2023. I'm Scott. That's Bo. There's no co pilot sitting in the back seat someplace, and it's about 7 o'clock, 7 30 in the morning uh, on the 11th. Did I mention that? Uh, of June 2023. Uh, Sunday. It's a nice day down here in Tampa, Florida. Today, we're going to talk about. Norman Finkelstein. Eh. Mm. And and I hate to do this only because I really like Finkelstein. I like his, his work. I like his writing. I like what he stands for. And this is not a takedown in like I did with Goodman or uh, Gnome or Harris or... Uh, any of these others are AOC or Bernie Sanders. Um, this is not that kind of thing. <laughs> this is... I guess it is a it's, a... it's a... it's a... it's a slight disappointment that I have in Mr. Finkelstein. Um, and that he treats this election cycle we're in as if it is meaningful now maybe it is in so much that it's a good way to gauge where a society is the fact that we rejected Hillary Clinton and took the lesser of two evils and the lesser of two evils at that point was orange man <laughs> he was the actual lesser of two evils but the fact is the people of this country made a choice in spite of the election being heavily rigged it still wasn't rigged enough for them to shove Hillary Clinton down our throats now we have Biden um, the elections are rigged and acting as if these things are any more than these these events that we stage are anything other than what is it called? Is a wind vane, a sock, wind sock? It's a it's a it's a way by which we can measure um, our progress and where the sanity level is still in the United States, not with the election results, but with the polling that exists and the lead up to it. Because usually they make they keep the polls relatively rig free so that they can the people who are making the decisions can see can can measure their success or their where they're coming up short and trying to move the fucking needle of the country towards this, the, the, the candidate they've already selected. <laughs> now, I know that's a kind of a cynical view of our glorious democracy, of this, 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 sh this city on, shining city on the hill, and I bring him up for a reason. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but we live in cynical times. It's just a fact. So Norman is talking about, uh, in two articles, I follow him on Substack, and you could too if you would like. Um, Norman's talking about um, how the mainstream media and the alternative media, specifically Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman, uh, are handling the candidacy announcement of one Cornell West. And uh, it's illuminating, to say the least. It's what's illuminating about it is what he misses. What's illuminating about it, and this is a guy who's brilliant. This is a man who's brilliant. And I have the utmost and have had the utmost respect for and still have the utmost respect for him. But what's illuminating is, is what he misses and his 
critical evaluation of not only Amy Goodman, but also to some degree, Cornell West, not enough. Um, we'll talk about that. But I, I first want to make sure that you guys understand, you know, who <laughs> Norman Finkelstein is. Norman Finkelstein has made a career out of standing up for the politicians, or for pal Palestinians, not politicians, Palestinians. Um, it's not his career. He's a fucking professor and a writer, uh, historian, um, activist. Um, and he's also Jewish. And both of his parents suffered during the Holocaust. I believe both of them uh, were in concentration camps at one time or another. Um, many members of his family, his immediate family, uh, back then perished during those times. And he is probably one of the most outspoken critics of Zionism and of how uh, the Israeli government and the IDF specifically and some Israelis, many Israelis, treat Palestinians. Um, I don't know if you ever saw this video where he was at a school giving a talk and they did a Q&A <laughs> and this young girl stepped to the mic at the end of it to ask a question. Let me make sure that my, it doesn't look like my thing is plugged in. Yes, it is. And she asks this teary-eyed question about, well, what about all the rockets going into, into Israel? And won't somebody do something to save Israel? And he just lit into her. He lit into her and her crocodile tears. <laughs> and that was a very famous fucking exchange. Which, by the way, is very difficult to find on YouTube. Because they, of course, are extremely pro-Israel. Um. Every single member of my family on both sides was exterminated. And it's precisely and exactly because of the lessons my parents taught me and my two siblings. And I will not be silent when Israel commits its crimes against the Palestinians. Norman Finkelstein, he's a professor of political science. He's been at the center of numerous heated academic and political disputes. He, he, um, he has stood up for something um, in spite of extreme professional uh, pressure placed on him. Um, of course, he is called a self-deprecating and self-hating Jew and all of these things. <laughs> but he has continued and he uh, will, will continue <coughs> to do what he does. So, um, if you're not familiar, you, 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 I, 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 uh, I, um, <coughs> I, I would, I would, uh, highly recommend maybe taking a couple days and just digging into who Norman Finkelstein is and what he's gone through and the rightness of his campaign. Um, now, all that said, um, Norman has his own substack, which you can um, follow even without having to pay. So, I recommend you do that, unless, unless and you certainly can uh, pledge support to him. Uh, he has a Substack, and as of the last couple of days, I've been getting email notifications where he is on this thing with Cornell West and with Amy Goodman and how the mainstream media are uh, attacking uh, Brother West. I want to read a little bit of two articles, the last two that he sent. This was on June 10th. Today is the 11th. 
He writes, this is the Bernie Sanders redux. Democratic Party woke hacks out to stop Cornell West's presidential bid. He writes, I commented yesterday on Amy Goodman's aggressive interview with Cornell West. It now appears to be open season on Cornell from the Democratic Party's woke hacks. To defend the party from a radical insurgency, this is their designated task, and that's why these sub-mediocrities are generally rewarded. That's how, that's why these sub-mediocrities are generally rewarded. Now, let me stop for a second and remind Mr. Finkelstein that the Democratic Party has in its uh, in its constitution, in its in its in its um, legal fucking setup, uh, something called superdelegates. Why are superdelegates there? Why does the Democratic Party have superdelegates and the Republican Party does not? Because the Democratic Party, and really since its inception, but certainly since they added the superdelegates back when somebody threatened a long time ago, 40 years ago, somebody threatened to maybe take a more populist opinion and win in the Democratic Party nomination with it, they uh, decided to do something that would ensure that that kind of thing, a real left-leaning candidate, couldn't possibly fucking succeed winning the nomination. Of course, now we have electronic voting machines and they have other things that they did in 2016 and 2020. To the likes of Bernie Sanders, you can go back to fucking Dennis Kucinich if you like. You can go back to fucking 2008 if you like. Did the same thing with him. Uh, did the same thing, got rid of Cynthia McKinney. The Democratic Party has a long storied history of, at least recently, in the last 40 years, being designed to make sure that real left-leaning candidates who, even if they represent the majority of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the wishes of the majority of the fucking people on the left in the Democratic Party, don't find their way into the general elections. This has been, this is, this is canon in the Democratic Party. It is, it is the foundation upon which it is, has been remade. It was remade to be a centrist DLC, new Democratic Party uh, of America, neoliberal institution to bring the fucking left and drag them kicking and screaming if necessary further and further and further to the right that's where we've been the last fucking 40 years barack obama himself said after his two tenure his two two uh, uh terms in office in an interview he said <laughs> he he governed right of reagan and he did. And that's the second time I've mentioned Reagan. There will be a third. But let's go back. Continuing. The latest entrant into the nation's Joan Walsh. Walsh was one of Hillary Clinton's attack dogs in the 2016 and 2016 going after Bernie Sanders. Now she's got Cornell in her crosshairs. In the current issue of the nation, she attacks Cornell for agreeing with Ron DeSantis that the West can Western canon uh, should be taught in schools. Cornell knows the classics, which he cites with impressive range and precision. It's doubtful Walsh would know a classic if a bitter on the thigh. In my book, I'll burn that bridge when I get to it. He always mentions his book in the first paragraph of these things. I discuss the woke assault on the canon and, par and parenthet parenthetically note uh, Cornell's reverence for it. Here's an exception, an excerpt. Um, I'm doing a horrible job reading today my glasses. I should be wearing my glasses, but I'm not. Uh, 
I need to make sure that we understand something as I, before I go forward. My issues with Cornell does not, does not mean that I am a Santis supporter, does not mean I'm a Biden supporter, does not mean I'm a fucking Trump supporter. The issues why I have with Cornell is that he is a different flavor of the same shit. And she is right in the Nation magazine to point out, I don't like, I live in Florida. There are things about Ron DeSantis and what he's done that I like. There are many things I don't like about this neoliberal fucking imperialist. He regularly demonizes any fucking Latin American country that does not currently have a neoliberal free market puppet running it. He demonizes the the evil dictatorships of Cuba and Nicaragua and Venezuela. He he. This is and of course now uh, Brazil certainly now Brazil, and Mexico. He is a pure fucking neoliberal. He might move the needle a little bit when it comes to mandates and lockdowns and fucking digital IDs and and, and, uh, also... um, Open borders, which is a neoliberal agenda, by the way. So uh, to those things, I give him credit. However, two things can be true at the same time. Yes, I I appreciate the fact that he is uh, on the right side of some issues. However, uh, he won't get my vote. Nobody will, first of all, because voting is (laughs) stupid. It's ridiculous. It's rigged. I'm not, not going to put my fucking vote into a black box and hope it turns out on the other side the way I fucking voted for it. But he is right. Cornell West is a free marketeer. He is a neoliberal in progressive clothing, just like fucking Barack Obama was. Let me tell you Cornell West's story, one that Norman Finkelstein won't tell you, or maybe he doesn't know. West used to tell this story once he finally came out on against Barack Obama and called him a capitalist and the worst kind of capitalist. Not to toot my own horn, but I don't have a book to sell in the first paragraph of all my goddamn substack. So let me just toss this out there. Um, I knew what Barack Obama was in the lead up to the election in 2008. And I said so. And I wrote so. And I got kicked off a website that I created, TP Zoo, because I did that. <laughs> because everybody was high on the hopium after fucking George W. Bush. Change! And what did they get? And even Cornel West came to that conclusion in 2011, finally. <coughs> but according to Cornel West and the stories he told about Brother Obama, that wasn't always the case. And in fact... He went to pay a visit on Brother Obama. That also irks me. Well, we'll talk about that. But he went to pay a visit on Brother Obama in the White House. Um, And this was after, obviously, um, the inauguration. Which means Brother Obama had already picked his cabinet. Or should I say, I'm sorry. Um, I, I should say, um, it wasn't Chase. Who was the other big fucking bank? Um, God damn it. It's not Chase. It's not Chase. Who is it? 
Citigroup. Thank you. So it came out sometime years later. As some of us pointed out, as it was happening in the when he was a when Obama was a uh, president elect, uh, and he was picking the drapes, he was also picking his cabinet. Well, he wasn't picking his cabinet. City City Group was picking his cabinet. City Group gave him a list of people to appoint for his cabinet members, for his secretary of this, secretary of that, all of them. They gave him a list before the election in exchange for all their financial support. And he put all of them, all the ones from Citigroup, that they gave, the list that they gave him, uh, got those appointments except for one. Now Cornell later admits that Barack Obama was the biggest, was the worst bankster president, uh, bankster worshiping and and, and sycophant, sycophantic uh, supporter of, of the banks. Um, we've seen. He admits that. However, he knew that before he went to fucking see him. He knew that from the day he won the presidential nomin- the presidential election to the day he took office because of all these fucking appointments that were the worst neoliberal motherfuckers in the, on, on the planet. And he was putting him in charge of his. He already knew that. But he still went to visit the president. He tells this story about where he was, when he was sitting in the office waiting to go in to have his audience with Obama God, at that time, Pope of the fucking left. And the door opens and out come these, according to him, four leading African-American women in the various rights movements and organizations. And he tells the story that as they walked by him, they looked at him and they were all pissed off. And one of them said to him, uh, that man has no soul or something to that effect. Apparently, they didn't get what they wanted either. Their payoff for supporting him in his candidacy. So in goes Cornell and he comes out with the same fucking results. Cornell wanted in and he didn't get in and he supported Barack Obama and he campaigned for Barack Obama I'm not sure he campaigned with Obama but I'm sure at some point he did and some dumbass like myself not a Harvard fucking professor some dumbass like myself can figure out what Barack Obama is or was, prior to November 4th, 2008, Cornell West damn sure could. Because by all accounts, he's a lot smarter than I am. And he certainly got his ear to the ground and knows more and has more access to inside information than I do. And yet, he went there, hat in hand, opened the door, walked in, praised Brother Obama, sat there and glad-handed him and talked with him, I'm sure, fully expecting to get a payoff. But he didn't. And so then he became bitter. But at first he couldn't come out with that. Why? Because this was a fresh change time with Obama God. Hell, Obama used two cruise missiles to kill 23 children in Yemen in December of 2009. Hadn't been in office a year. What did they do? They gave him a Nobel Peace Prize. So West being the crass fucking opportunist that he is, and free market capitalist, said nothing. That, Norman, Mr. Finkelstein, my fault. That, Mr. Finkelstein, is the man you believe is the next Bernie Sanders. 
Now, you might be more accurate than you actually know. Bernie Sanders never intended to win 2016. Bernie Sanders served a purpose. They knew they were running one of the most deplorable candidates in the Democratic Party. And they fully expected her to smash through that fucking glass ceiling. But they also knew the Democratic Party wouldn't get behind her. She had too much baggage. She was vile. She was Medusa. If you crossed her and you met and your eyes met with her and locked her, then you turned to stone or you suicided. She was a leftist, or she by in, in name only, she was a fucking pure neoliberal centrist and a warmonger. She didn't stand a chance unless they found a candidate that would be even more deplorable than her. And so the mainstream media gave him billions of dollars in free fucking advertising. And Bernie Sanders set out to motivate the fucking young and the, and the idealistic, the real fucking left. And that's what he did with his grandpa fucking Bernie fucking routine. That's exactly what he did. But Grandpa Bernie was a huge supporter of all things fucking Israel. Yeah, he would come out and fucking get and scold them from time to time when they killed a bunch of fucking Palestinians and children. But for the most part, when it really came down to push and shove, when his own constituency in a fucking town hall is saying, why won't you speak out against them fucking shelling people, these kids, during Operation Cast Lead, he yelled at him to shut up. Because Israel has a right to defend itself. <laughs> What's his name? Um, Michael Parente. Long before I understood what fucking Bernie Sanders was. Michael Parente had a very good understanding. Socialists don't vote for and tacitly support our capitalist, imperialist fucking machine, regime-changing, left-leaning countries run by socialists. And Bernie does that every single time, either tacitly by calling Assad, calling Gaddafi brutal, evil dictators, or openly, like he did with Slobodan Milosevic in Yugoslavia. Ever since Yugoslavia, Michael Parente understood exactly who Bernie Sanders really was. And why he's not only allowed to continue in Congress, but then even get a goddamn promotion into the Senate. And then run for office. Run for the highest office. As a sheepdog. <laughs> that was the most obvious case of a nomination being stolen. Of an election being rigged. Was the primary case, the Democratic primary of 2016. It was... Obvious. It was as obvious as the Alvin Green story in South Carolina in 2010. It was obvious. And yet, in the end, he stood on stage and held Hillary Clinton's hand up high proudly. And hoping the sheep that he had been herding, the ones that were never going to get behind Hillary Clinton, hoping a certain percentage of them would hold their nose and vote for Hillary. That's what his job was. He never intended to be president. Not in 2016 and not in 2020. Period. And now when you say, Mr. Finkelstein, that 
Cornell West is the next Bernie Sanders. Is that what you mean? Because just like Bernie, Cornell has his history. And that history exposes who he really fucking is. <laughs> I'm going to read this as quickly as I possibly can. This is from Norman Finkelstein's Substack. It's short takes. He's talking about uh, Samantha Power, Jesus Christ, Amy Goodman, and Cornell West. This is the second part, talking about Amy Goodman and Cornell West. It seems like he's figured out finally what Amy Goodman is or who Amy Goodman is. Uh, here's my substack, and you don't have to, there's, there's no donation thing up here. You don't have to pay anything to be here. This is an article that I wrote from 2000, in 2011, talking about what a fucking full-on sellout Amy Goodman was. That's 12 years ago. 12 fucking years of knowing what Amy Goodman was. She had already sold out. So uh, this is not a shock to me, as it apparently is to Mr. Finkelstein. But we'll take a look at this. Quote, Amy Goodman recently interviewed presidential candidate Cornell West on Democracy Now! Goodman was very tough on Cornell. She came across as an MSNBC apparatchik ordered to do a hatchet job. Goodman wondered why Cornell appeared on Joe Rogan's program and featured Rogan in his campaign ad when Rogan uttered the epithet, n-word on his podcast. She wondered why Cornell is running on the People's Party ticket when its founders accused of sexual harassment. I'm surprised she didn't fault Cornell for reaching, uh, for teaching at Princeton University when one of its presidents, John Witherspoon, owned slaves and another, Woodrow Wilson, was a notorious racist. I'll tell you why that is. She's not going to go after a fucking institution like Princeton. Sorry, I mentioned Harvard before. It's Princeton. My fault. Continuing, pity she didn't query Cornell on whether he planned to pay black reparations. Goodman sought to justify her bellicose tone. Quote, so, you know, democracy now, we ask very critical questions. End quote. Not to woke guests, she doesn't. I can think of many critical questions she could have posed to Angela Davis. Why do you charge tens of thousands of dollars speaking fees for at solidarity events? or Patrice uh, Colors. What happened to the $90 million collected by your Black Lives Matter organization? Or Abram X. Kendi, why haven't you answered any of the scholarly criticisms on your books? Or, for that matter, uh, Zoe Zephyr. Haven't many medical experts questioned the infliction of puberty blockers on children? On the other hand, I cannot say Cornell came off very well at all. When I heard his presidential announcement, I resolved to campaign for him. He resolved to campaign for Cornell West. I just want you to remember that. Continuing, he's a very smart, principled, and he's an active activist. I can do without his addressing his brother dirtbags like Al Sharpton. Well, yeah. Uh, Cornell seems a worthy successor to Bernie Sanders, and if he manages to build an organization, might shake things up. But here's an excerpt for what he had to say when Goodman asked him about the Ukraine war. <laughs> Cornell. And so we're witnessing a proxy war. There must be a ceasefire. There must be stopping of that war. Why? We're on the road to a nuclear war. And that's the last thing we want to see, my dear sister. <laughs> Amy Goodman. And as president, what exactly would you do to stop that war? Cornel West. Oh, one is... I would pull back on the U.S. military support. I would sit down with the elites from the Chinese Empire given all their forms of regimentation and repression in their own context. Think about that. Think about our precious Muslim brothers and sisters in China, the Uyghurs. 
But I would sit down with the Chinese. I would sit down with the Ukrainians. I would sit down with the Russians and say, we're going to stop this war. We're going to come up with a plan and a process with a variety of voices heard to make sure that the suffering stops. We understand that we are honest about the larger context of the war. End quote. And fortunately, we just don't get that kind of perspective, you know, in corporate media. Thank God for democracy now. This is still Cornell West. Praising the sold out Amy Goodman and Cornell and democracy now. And thank God for a few other venues that try to tell the truth about this. Because you know, my dear sister Amy, that I'm a jazz man in American politics. And jazz is about blues. And blues is about catastrophe, lyrically expressed and candidly confronted and artistically transfigured. And the catastrophes have to be wrestled with. And it could be ecological ones. It could be economic ones of grotesque wealth inequality. And it could be social ones, political ones, psychic ones. And then there's swing, which is different conception of time. So we have ways of authorizing a better future, given what uh, seem to be all the closed routes and all the foreclosures, all the alternatives trumped. So you have to make sure that the vitality and energy you have swings in such a way that you never lose hope in having solidarity and oppressed people all around the world. And of course, the third element is improvisation. So you, you see, and as he points out, uh, this whole jazz man thing is just fucking stupid. It's just fucking stupid. He says, I'm not a jazz man, but a Jew. And as a Jew, I would say, oy vey. <laughs> For such a knowledgeable fellow, this was positively awful. The great appeal of Bernie Sanders was he had a very concrete program that he reiterated almost to the point of tedium on every possible occasion. I'll tell you one that he reiterated uh, to the point of tedium. I don't want to hear about those damn emails. That's one he reiterated to the point of tedium. I don't want to hear about those emails. Shut up. Israel has a right to defend itself. To the point of tedium. I don't support a, a war against him, but something's got to be done to stop this evil dictator from killing his own people. Tedium. To the fucking point of tedium. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Mr. Finkelstein. Let me give you <laughs> where I asked that question <laughs> by Amy Goodman. Here's concrete. Mr. Creighton, candidate Creighton, what would you do to stop the Ukraine war? I would stop all funding tomorrow. I would pull all fucking military assets out. I would pull all military advisors out tomorrow. I would not only stop all funding of military assets in Ukraine, I would stop all funding of everything in Ukraine. Not only would I stop all funding of everything from the government in Ukraine, I will place sanctions on other countries who continue. I will place sanctions on Israel. I will place sanctions on the United Kingdom. I will place sanctions on France. I will place sanctions on anyone, painful sanctions, if they continue past tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern time, to give anything to the war effort or anybody inside Ukraine while the war effort is continuing. Not only will I do that, but I will also do this. I will tell every U.S. business if they do not immediately withdraw all assets, personnel, investments from Ukraine by 5 p.m. tomorrow, standard Eastern Standard Time, then I will take your country, your, your, your corporation, and I will have my people dig up any federal government contracts 
that we have with your company, and I will tear them up personally, and we will stop payments on anything to do with your, co with your company. I will sanction governments, and I will sanction and penalize U.S. corporations doing any kind of business inside Ukraine if, by 5 p.m. tomorrow, this thing isn't over and done with. I don't need to sit down and talk to the brothers and sisters in China and fucking Russia. And Ukraine. There's no need. We started this. We can end this instantly. You come out and have that message publicly, 2 p.m. on a Tuesday, standard Eastern Daylight Time. <laughs> and Zelensky will have a fucking, Zelensky will have a fucking agreement signed with the Russians by 2 p.m. the next goddamn day. And that's a fact. You don't need the fucking Chinese. You don't need to fucking negotiate jack fucking shit. Zelensky, you're going to be on your own. You're on your own now. Do you want to go up against fucking Russia by yourself? Be my guest. See how well that works out for you. But you know that whole DIIA thing and all these fucking Google companies and, 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 and Amazon companies <laughs> and all our banks... And BlackRock, they ain't going to be there no more for you. You're not getting all that fucking World Economic Forum transition to the fucking Great Reset. It's not happening. If you keep this thing up. Now it's on you. Yeah, we did it. You can try to sue us later. You can take us to court later. Let the historians fucking work it out. Let them fucking fight it out. But this, our part... Done. And I would mean it. If there was no agreement <laughs> and France was still fucking financing on 5 p.m. the next goddamn day, standard daylight Eastern, standard daylight Eastern savings time, whatever the fuck it is, I would sanction everything that we could with France to make a point. And if BlackRock was still invested, BlackRock would be Anything BlackRock, which is almost everything, anything BlackRock touched, there'd be no contract, no federal contract anymore because I'd tear them all up. And I'd have the right to do that. Because they would be illegally financing a foreign war that is causing serious harm to the American people. I mean, shit. Since they're Nazis... You really could hit them with. What's the what's the thing George H. W. Prescott Bush got fucking hit with? Aiding and abetting the fucking enemies. I mean, they are fucking Nazis, right? So that'd be the end of that. That's the that's the whole conversation. That's the end of the conversation. That's it. Now, what does he do? He tosses in there the Uyghurs story, the bullshit Uyghurs story. That's Cornell West for you. That's Cornell West for you. Uh, and this guy, and this guy, Norman Finkelstein, resolved to campaign for him. Cornel West explains his vote for neoliberal disaster Biden at Penn Justice Dems panel. The fucking Justice Democrats. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> so here he is. Doing his fucking routine. Which, again, the routine bothers me as much as anything else about this guy. He is a total fraud. One day before Joe Biden officially became president-elect, Penn Justice Democrats and Penn Young Democratic Socialists of America 
two fake organizations, hosted a post-election discussion about the future of leftist policies, including leading leftist scholar Cornell West. Leading what? West sharply critiqued the Democratic Party, especially its failure to protect and uplift the working class, and cited frustration with having to vote for Biden, whom he labeled a neoliberal disaster. What we got to vote for was the mediocre, milk-toast, neoliberal centrist, because he's, no, he's better than fascism, and the fascist catastrophe is worse than the neoliberal disaster. Now we just got to come to terms with the neoliberal disaster. Let me, again, in case people like Finkelstein and others can't understand that, let me parse that out for you. He wanted a fucking job in the fucking Obama White House, knowing what Obama was. He wanted a job. During the election, Donald Trump was anything but fascist. He was populist. He was described as everything from fucking Nazi to, to Hitler to fucking Stalin, if that's, uh, some people think that's a fucking slam, to being fascist. He was a populist. That's what he campaigned as. He's also neoliberal. But he was populist, not a fascist. What's interesting is Cornell West trying to pretend that there's a difference between neoliberalism and fascism. <laughs> there isn't. Neoliberalism is the economic ideology of choice of the fascist. It absolutely is. If you think about the definition of fascism, as the father of modern fascism said, a father of fascism said, it's the blending of the fucking corporate and the state. So you can't tell one from the other. And the state only serves to keep the population in place and serve the interest of the corporation. The corporation becomes the state. It assimilates it. Well, that's neoliberalism. Isn't it? So, neoliberalism and fascism are the same thing, Mr. West. And in case Mr. Finkelstein is paying attention, it's the same thing. Here he is talking about when he backed Obama, but then came out after the Obama God, the, 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 <laughs> the bloom was off of that particular rose. He finally came out when it was safe enough to come out with scathing critiques of President Obama in 2011. Thank you very much for keeping up to date with that. And here's one last thing I'll share with you. Also in 2011, a tweet from Cornell West. Ronald Reagan was a freedom fighter in terms of supporting our Jewish brothers and sisters in the Soviet Union opposing vicious forms of communism. Cornell West is a fucking free marketeer. He is a neoliberal who wanted, he did his very best to elevate himself to the point where he would actually be in the fucking Obama administration. And he was embittered when Barack showed him his true face, which by the way, Mr. West, certainly understood long before he walked into that fucking office and sat down and waited his turn for his audience with Obama God in January of 2009. He is a fucking crass opportunist playing a stupid fucking 
role. The jazz man. Playing a fucking role. I'm going to bedazzle them with bullshit. Rather than answering a simple question the way I answered it. But he can't answer the way I answered it. You know why? Because what I said about ending the fucking war would piss off his backers. I would love to see where Mr. West's money comes from. You know, Mr. Finkelstein, you mentioned in there, and you rightly so, about that woman, uh, what's her name? Uh, the one who ran Black Lives Matter. And you wonder why Amy Goodman didn't ask about the missing $90 million. That money didn't come from working class people. That money came primarily from major corporations. Major corporations funding black opposition. Funding black opposition. Who, when it comes down to it, really doesn't fucking go after them. Just like Amy Goodman doesn't go after them. Would you like another example? RFK Jr. is no stronger, there's no stronger advocate for the glorious free market capitalism than Robert F. Kennedy Jr. There's tons of quotes. Tons of quotes about that. They control. It's like, uh, what's he talking about? Who was he talking about? Uh, oh, we had to, we was talking about fucking having to vote for fucking Joe Biden. Oh my God, we had to vote for Joe Biden because neoliberalism is better than fascism. Neoliberalism is fascism. Because they, they made us. They only gave us these options, these choices. Gosh darn it, you got to hold your nose and fucking vote on electronic voting machines. <laughs> because they gave us only these options. And now, an option they're giving us is Cornell West, Mr. Finkelstein. The option they gave us before, that was, uh, oh yeah, Bernie Sanders. The guy you mentioned, the title of your fucking piece. One of your pieces. The guy who was a sheepdog. Who never expected to fucking win. That's why they gave him a goddamn log cabin on a lake after the fucking 2016. Before the general election. It was payment. He was paid for services rendered generational wealth to pass on to his children and his grandchildren. Is that what Cornel West is doing? It's Cornel West rages about the fucking Uyghurs and then goes into the jazz man fucking theory when it comes to what are you going to do about fucking Ukraine? How do you stop Ukraine? I told you how to stop Ukraine. It's very simple. He can't do that. Why? Because just like fucking Bernie Sanders before him, Cornel West is compromised. You know who wasn't compromised? Cynthia McKinney. Dennis Kucinich. They didn't get press like this. I don't believe they got you fucking writing articles about them. And I'm not sure whether or not you campaigned for them. Maybe Dennis. Maybe you did. I hope you did. Back in the day. Before they railroaded him talking about fucking him seeing aliens on the fucking national debate stage. How do you think that one would have gone these days? <laughs> 
You're missing the boat on this, Mr. Finkelstein. You are. And I hate to say that because you've been right on the money so many times in the past. And it is with the utmost respect that I make this video, knowing full well you'll never see it. But it kind of makes me feel better. Gets the shit off my chest. Cornell West is a fraud. So is Robert Kennedy Jr. So is Ron DeSantis. So was Bernie Sanders. So is our fucking system. As long as you have faith-based elections, none of that matters. None of it. You're just trying to get a fucking... You're just trying to get a measure and see how, how successful your campaigns are and your influence is and all the fucking money you're paying these people to lead them down a fucking path. The Cornell Wests of the world pushing the bullshit Uyghur story. Talking about what a fucking hero Ronald Reagan was. They're pulling us further and further and further to the right. And they'll continue as long as people like Norman Finkelstein don't figure that out. And that, boys and girls, is disappointing. Anyway, <laughs> I certainly have, hope you have a much brighter Sunday. And I will talk to you next time. Bo says adios as he gets squeaky. And he's gone. <laughs> Take care, guys. Have a good Sunday. Thank you for your time.